Thanks, Dr. Rajesh. Yeah. So can you see my slides? Yeah. Okay. So I'll be talking about OCT in glaucoma management. So these are the topics I'll try to cover some of the topics in next 20 minutes. Why imaging? What is the, uh, the logic, you know, like perimetry logic, perimetry, we are used to it. So I'll just compare with the perimetry, uh, how to read the uh, serious printout though now people are using OCT for a long time. Uh, the, what are the world glaucoma association consensus? Little bit about the progression and its implication. And forum, uh, the structure function correlation, I will not go in detail because the next speaker is going to talk in great detail about the structure function correlation. So we know that glaucoma is a progressive optic neuropathy. Uh, it's basically the changes in the optic disc and nerve fiber layer changes with correlating visual field where IOP is the causal risk factor. So the, and if you look at the literature, uh, the optic disc and RNA field changes usually happens before the perimetry, at least on white and white perimetry defects picks up. So there are some of the studies have shown that 20 to 30% of ganglion cells occurs before the white and white perimetry picks up the defect. So imaging has definite role in picking up the early disease. And I'll just give one example. You can see the classic is a waist shape defect superiorly, inferiorly. It is more highlighted in the red free photograph. And the white and white perimetry has just showing little bit of nasal step and blue and alloy also. So the perimetry usually takes little time in, at least in early stage and has lots of taste retest variability. So imaging plays definite role in the early management uh, in early picking up the disease. Now there are various imaging I'm not going to talk about much because nowadays uh, the optical coherence tomography and that to be spectral domain is the imaging technologies most of the ophthalmologists use. So I'll concentrate more on that only. I'll just give the logic. So, you know, when the perimetry started and we are using perimetry for decades. So we have a normal range. We have developed normal range for each point and sensitivity for each point is determined. The range is arbitrary and basically it includes the the normal population, the lower 5% of the normal population is what we usually said is the abnormal 5% uh, defect level. Then we use the 2% as a 2% and less than 0.5%. So we use the normal range to decide the abnormality. So we have to understand that every abnormal doesn't mean there's a disease. It is basically the chance, the probability of that particular patient of having disease. And the same thing, the imaging and the Perimetry. They have a similar thing. We have developed a normative database and based on normative database, we decide the abnormality value. So here we go by the percentage we have in imaging, usually percentile. We have upper 95 percentile, lower 5 percentile and lower 1 percentile. The lower 5 percentile usually is borderline, lower 1 percentile is abnormal. So basically the same principle that the normal range is developed, the range is arbitrary and everything what machine labels abnormal doesn't translate into disease, we have to correlate clinically. That is the, the most important point we have to keep in mind. Now, I just go briefly about the how to read printout, though everybody is using it. What I do, like in perimetry, we have eight zone, I divide OCT into four zone. The first one is the upper one where the demography is given. The name, date of birth, date of birth is very important because if the technician has entered the wrong date, then the machine will use the, the wrong age group for the comparison and uh, there would be a problem. So you have to see the date of birth, the, the scan, the quality of scan, because if the quality scan is six or more, then you are sure that, you know, uh, it's, a, it's most probably a robust uh, data. If the scan quality is poor, which sometimes can be, then uh, there would be a problem in analysis. And usually I don't like to use this data in uh, management if it's less than five. Look for the artifacts, there are various artifacts. Uh, can be because of the patient, can be because of the technician, can be because of the media opacity. So look for the artifacts. I'm not going to go in details because artifact itself is a, is a huge a separate presentation. But you have to look for the different artifacts which can develop during the scanning. The zone two is the, the data which machine has uh, obtained, the thickness map. The thickness map, if you have to remember, the darker the color, the normal the value. If it's a red, or dark yellow, the values are normal. If it is blue, light blue, then RNFL is thin. So this is what is the, the gross value. Then the third zone is here. That is the 
deviation plot. So this is a super pixel analysis where uh, the magnitude of RNA defect is analyzed. And here, the darker the color is the more abnormal the value. So the red would usually point out to be less than uh, one percentile. The yellow is five percentile. So this is zone three. And the zone four is all other data where you have a the X Y graph of neuroretinal rim thickness, RNFL thickness. You have a quadrant wise uh, analysis of RNFL, and you have each clock hour. And there is a table about the disk area, rim area, and average RNFL thickness. So this is the zone four. Each zone is important. This here the RNFL important. It gives you the comparison with the right and left eye. The the dotted is left. The darker is the the plane is right eye. So you can compare the RNFL value between both eyes at what is happening, and if retinal rim and retinal RNFL thickness. So it is a graphic representation. This is the quadrant wise again the same thing. It divides into superior and inferior quadrant, which are more important compared to nasal temporal. And you each clock hour again the superior and inferior clock hours like five, six, seven, and eleven, twelve, and one is more important than the clock hour which comes in temporal and nasal area. And I'll just give one. This is from the uh, status time zone uh, domain, but it very nicely elaborate that you have a right eye, you have a left eye where there is RNFL thinning, and it gives the comparison. Then you can see very nicely that the left eye RNFL is in both superior and inferior, which is the area you are more interested in glaucoma. You can see right, left, and the comparison. The superior, the right has maintained both uh, double arm pattern where the left. Double arm pattern is lost, and there is a significant RNFL thinning. So this is how you can see the OCT uh, interpretation. This is the table. The table usually I don't pay much attention, but you get a fair idea about the disk area, and you can see this disk area is 1.8, which is on the little bit on the smaller side. The the gray is something where the machine tells you that there is no normative database for the comparison. The yellow, you know, the red, you know, the green, we know, and this is one gray, which means that the machine doesn't have enough normative database to compare to a statistical analysis. Now, the World Glaucoma Association consensus is very clear. It says that there no single examination method alone is adequate for the diagnosis of glaucoma. It is recommended as a clinical tool to augment and facilitate the assessment of optic disc and RNA in management of glaucoma. So the bottom line is it should not be used in isolation. Which is habit sometime in general practice. They do only OCT and see that OCT shows red color, so is abnormal. Green is normal. No, you have to do a, a proper clinical examination and then use OCT along with your clinical examination to augment your diagnosis. Not in isolation is a screening tool. And in fact, the World Glaucoma Association it goes down and says that optic disc imaging imaging is useful in experts' hand in only in certain cases. So. Please be careful using OCT in isolation for the diagnosis or to rule in or rule out disease. It is it is going to be a counterproductive. It has to along with your a proper clinical examination. Now the second because you know glaucoma is a chronic progressive neuropathy. The diagnosing progression is very important. So if you look the definition of progression, it says that evolution from disease from one stage to another stage. That is, if you a detectable nerve fiber layer. Changes to increase in the nerve fiber layer changes, or if there is a no nerve fiber changes happening beginning of the nerve fiber layer changes, you can see on OCT there also is progression. So I am not going to talk about that when to treat progression. I am just going to talk about what is progression and how we diagnose on imaging technologies. But this is the various step you know described by the professor Van der long time back in two thousand four. So there too visual field progression. Ronnie has already uh, talked. Um, Again, uh, we will have discussion about structure function correlations. So I will talk about the optic disc, and I am going to concern only on imaging. So I will just give one example that visual field is gold standard, and I am not going to deny at all that the progression on visual field is more robust and more important from day to day clinical practice. But sometimes the patient do find difficult to do perimetry. And this is just one example I am showing. We can see that this disc is not looking that bad. The patient is just not learning. How to do the field? So it shows the the visual field, advanced visual field debate, both superior, the nasal step, and it looks classic. But if you look OCT all the time, 
this is from my spectral domain data or as status uh, time domain it's stable and this is in between i had to monitor i had to explain the patient not technician i gave the time and he could do better but every time is not possible for us to do the perimetry guiding the patient in all the patients so some patient and if you look the data at least 8 to 10 percent of the patient do not learn how to do perimetry despite repeated training from the experts so for those patient imaging may be a better way of uh, managing so i am not saying in every patient imaging has its own limitation but in few patients so how to diagnose progression on oct so there are event based analysis just like the perimetry and we have trend based analysis so event based analysis uses the two baseline and for third baseline you can start picking up the progression is the advantage but there is a variability the measurement error is involved so event based analysis do have a problem and uh, it uses only few limited field not all the database so uh, there's a problem with event based but yes event based we usually picks up the progression much earlier than trend based analysis so that's a uh, advantage of event based analysis the limitation is it susceptible to outliers and may identify false progression so if you combine both event and trend it's always better now trend on other hand usually required at least five to six field for perim imaging to make a slope so once you have five or six the the trend usually is much more stronger and picks up even a smaller changes so that's the advantage of regression trend based analysis and you can have a trend based analysis where various we have in oct i'll just talk about it and it also has the advantage of trend is the regression slope also gives you the idea about the rate of progression which the event based analysis is not able to show so that's the advantage of rate of progression which is very important in glaucoma which your uh, regression analysis will give so that's a trend uh, is susceptible less susceptible to fluctuation that's advantage but the problem is that once you have six seven field and if you make the slope subsequently the slope will remain the same downhill so even if your disease is stabilized after that it will continue to show the one downward downward slope so in for these there's a limitation of trend that you have to make a new baseline and look for the progression so you cannot use the old data in the trend because the slope would be downward so this is how the oct uh, progression printout looks this is two baseline this is the two subsequent field so this is the event based analysis this is trend based analysis and this is how it gives you the yellow is possible loss the maroon red is likely loss and the purple is possible increase which usually doesn't happen in glaucoma so you know that this this is because sometime if you arneal imaging technology had a the low quality value or subsequently low quality value you can have this kind of thing but this is practically not important because rna pl or ganglion cell is not going to increase over a period of year with current management so this is event based analysis the progression map this is uh, two baseline to follow up and this is how it marks i just come into detail then the other is the rna pl thickness profile progression it divides us the whole area into 64 sector and if the four sector shows progression then it will uh, mark as a progression that is the thickness profile progression and this is various trend based analysis the average rna pl superior inferior rna pl and cup dis ratio so first is event based analysis basically it uses minimum the 2% of image area so even a small progression can be picked up by event based analysis because it is a super pixel uh, 150 pixel is used only 2% so even if the changes is in 2% area the machine can pick up progression that's the advantage of the uh, this analysis event based the second i already mentioned the profile progression it is divided into 64 sectors if the four sectors shows worsening uh, it make marks as a progression and here you can see in oct so this area shows thinning four sector it is marked as progression this both is designed for the 95% specificity and third is uh, the trend based we have a uh, average superior inferior and cup dis ratio uh, and this is how the line is marked and if one point this you can see this mark is yellow this is going into red so it also shows the whether is possible progression or likely progression so all put together this is the three uh, way the oct picks up the rnfl analysis picks up the progression and it also gives the value for each visits so you know that what is the happening to the 
the row row rnfl value and uh, what is the difference how much is gone down the gcc also the same thing you have event based analysis and you have trend based analysis so basically the same thing uh, it possible is yellow the red is likely so these are the two rnfl and gcc progression which can we can look into the spectral domain ocd and this is how just one example where you have a uh, perimetry you have a gcc and you have rnfl and this area is mark progression it correlates here and on the perimetry so this is how the of course the forum will be discussed in great detail but i just given one example so the most important thing is that you have two baseline which you should do in the the as smaller visits at possible you also should look at the variability if your quality is not good and if the variability is too high at baseline then your subsequent analysis would be a problem you can see here the value is 672 64 is gone down so these two variability itself would make your subsequent progression analysis less robust now which parameters is most important uh, i usually rely more on rnfl of course gcc also is important the most important thing is if you look the advanced imaging glaucoma study this is the focal loss both in gcc rnfl is important and now there are certain study they have uh, come up with the glaucoma composite progression index which uses both structure and function so uh, that would be one more uh, 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 parameter in our armament to look the progression though it's not available uh, commercially at this point in time so what i do i look the whole printout of course i have a full clinical picture in my mind do entire scan look completely don't go only by the red or yellow color because then you are bound to make this red disease and green disease so you correlate and look whether the area which you have done in mind like inferior patient had inferior thinning and now converted to inferior notch the similar area on ocd should show progression not somewhere else so you should correlate your clinical finding so look for the focal changes not only average changes because the usually the glaucoma changes would happen focally so three ways the damage can happen the new rnfl defect we can have widening of the defect and deepening of the defect so these three way you look the uh, and the forum of course will help you uh, in certain way looking for the progression and you also will tell you structure function correlation also so the i am not going to go in detail i just show few slides this is how you have a vfi average rnfl thickness this is your uh, event based analysis and your uh, rnfl and it correlates here you can see that gps progress and inferior rnfl thinning this is a perfect a correlation of structure function progression you get a fair idea so this is one of my real patients you can see this gps worsened patient has developed inferior rnfl defect it is widened and has gcc also is widened so the patient is progressed so this is how you can look for the structure function correlation these are some of the example uh, i'll just go briefly uh, the nta segment module also is there which we can use for the angle closure glaucoma we can look the scleral spur scan scanal basically you can measure the various parameters like uh, aod 500 aod 750 and this can use for the angle closure i i mainly use uh, the asoct is to look for the the lens vault which is very helpful in in certain patients of angle closure so this is how i i and second thing to show patient your angle is narrow so sometime you know when you do the gonioscopy patient is not convinced if you take and you can show that this your angle is narrowed down compared to normal population so for ex teaching and the lens vault for my angle closure management and uh, from this is from the tnongs data that the lens vault is definitely more in angle closure patient compared to the normal population and it helps in certain patient in deciding not in every patient but certain patient where if i want to the early cataract surgery i use the lens vault as my uh, one of the parameters to decide the surgery so to conclude uh, the clinical diagnosis is important imaging helps for the diagnosis early diagnosis it helps for the progression Uh, but it has to align with your complete clinical picture, uh, and you have to look the disc carefully. And the imaging, the OCT will help you picking up the disease as well as progression. Thank you.